Alderman. Alderman Kinsella. <coughs> Alderman Kinsella. Take care of the back. Alderman Hazel. Alderwoman Duco. Here. Alderman Pusa. Here. Alderman Randall. Alderman Randall. Alderman Ferguson. Alderman Ferguson. Alderman Anthony. Alderman Hogan. Alderman Dentleman. Schaefer. Alderwoman Schaefer. Alderwoman Steele. Here. Alderman Rothweiler. Here. Alderman Elmore. Here. Alderman Weigand? Here. Alderman Wigington? Here. Alderman Barfield? Here. Alderman Kinsella? Alderman Randall? Here. Alderman Ferguson. Alderwoman Schaefer. Here. I just texted Alder Alderman. Here. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Thank you. Um, but Kinsella, I don't have. And Alderman Ferguson, did you get on? Priscilla was at the committee meeting, so yeah. she must just be getting on or something in trouble. Okay, at this time, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, we have um, here at City Hall, myself, uh, we have the city clerk, of course, uh, Jennifer Gainmeyer. Jennifer Ferguson is taping the, the videoing, and Scott Markovich is here, and Michael Veloff is here because we just had streets and grades. Um, any other department heads? Huh? Dean Hart, are you here? Yes, sir. And Garrett Harner, are you on? And Kinsella's here. Kinsella? Was, yes, that, here. was that Kinsella? Yes. Kinsella's here. Okay, and then uh, Alderman, I mean, uh, Garrett Harner's here, and uh, any other Alderman who I asked to be here? Anissa, are you here because we had some zoning? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay, very good. And Jason Poole, you're here? Yes, here. Okay. I'm, I, I might just be missing over. I'm not, I'm not making light of anything, but I think, oh, and, and Jamie, in case there's any financial, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Okay. We, we, um, I'm sure there's other ones. Leander, I guess you're here tonight, too. Library. I'm here. Okay, because I know we got something coming up later in the meeting. Okay, I think that I think that's most everybody that I have to have. Um, and if somebody else is here and wants to so say so, let me know. Um, 
Fire Chief and Police Chief, are you on? I know uh, Matt Ice Camp, you're on for Chief Clay, right? Yes, Mayor, I'm on. Okay, and, and, and Bud, are you on the line? Yes, sir, Mayor, I'm here. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to make you be here until the very last moment, Bud. Okay. Um, okay. Alderman Ferguson is here. Alderman Ferguson has checked in. Now we can start. Okay. Um, we got the uh, department heads, and I think we've got the uh, aldermen. At this time, I'm going to ask if everybody who's capable to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. You did. of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Unmuted. We have no public hearings this evening, so we're going to go to uh, public participation. Uh, is there anyone on the line from the public who would like to address the City Council this evening? Yes, sir. And who is this? Uh, this is Andrew Eichels. I'm CEO and co-founder of DL Products, LLC. Okay, and, and your comments, if you could keep them to two to three minutes at the max, uh, what, what is your comments? Absolutely. So I read today on Bubble News Democrat um, that Shalandria Simpson from, uh, I believe, Texas is opening up a cultivation facility on Route 15. Well, we have a zoning. Um, and I want. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah but it, that, I believe that's in the, the uh, zoning board of appeals portion today. Right. Um, and I was, I was curious. Um, I didn't know how much uh, public. I didn't know how much questions were going to go into that, and how much was going to be public. Uh, the council will be asking any questions or having discussion. It's already gone to the zoning board, where it was, uh, I think, vetted pretty carefully, and it'll be. Uh, it could go a relatively quick vote, but uh, it's uh, it's on the agenda tonight, and it's just particularly the agenda is 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 about the zoning. Okay. Okay, that's what I was curious about. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else from the Thank public you. on the call tonight? No one else from the public on the call. I'm here. Who's that? Yes, I'm here. Uh, this is Shalandria Simpson. So um, okay. I'm just here to kind of give an overview of the background. I guess there was a lot of confusion last time um, as to what my team and I are trying to do. I'm a pharmacist, and I've been a pharmacist since 2008. I have my doctorate degree in pharmacy from Texas Southern University. And I own my own business since 2013, so about seven years. Um, what we're trying to bring to the city, um, we – definitely want to bring businesses. We want to bring positivity to the city. We're not trying to bring anything negative. I know there's still people that against cannabis and medical marijuana, but we're trying to make it um, as city friendly as possible. Um, I go to my own pharmacy, which included government contracts with the Department of Labor. I do bedside deliveries for St. Joe's Social Hospital here in Houston. Um, and also I have my own CBD product line. So I have experience in the medical marijuana uh, industry. And we're trying to um, partner with the city um, to bring the cultivation there. We partner with um, cannabis consultants who has years and years of experience in build outs and design and the layout of everything. So they're the ones that really bring on experience to the team um, to make the aesthetics and everything flow with what's already going on in the city. We don't want to bring an eyesore to the city. We want to blend in with the community, and we want um, to come in and uplift. We want to do community services. We're providing jobs. Um, our construction has already laid out a detailed plan, and we will be hiring local construction people from the city as well as hiring local people for jobs. Um, my business partner, Michael Hume, he grew up in East St. Louis. He's been in the area uh, for about 40 years now, and so he's very familiar with the area and the community involvement 
and what goes on there. So we're just trying to partner with you guys um, to bring the cannabis craft grower um, into the city. Okay. Okay. If there's further questions when it gets into the meeting, we will allow the questions to you if there is a question because it's, it's more than just public participation. It's a topic on the agenda. So uh, I appreciate that for okay. now, and we will move on. Is there anyone else tonight for public participation? Hearing yes, uh, my name is Christina. Yes? Your last name? Yes, I am a Kibble, K-I-D-E. Okay. I am a project manager and senior right-of-way agent Bulkert Engineering, representing Ameren, and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have regarding any easements. Uh, we just had the Streets and Grades Committee meeting, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Okay, that's fine, and once again, because you're on the agenda, if there is a question by the Alderman, I will certainly allow them to, uh, to refer it to you, and I'm glad to know you're on the line, so thank you very much. One last call. Thank is there you. Is there anyone else... For public participation. Okay, hearing none, I'm going to close public participation. And we're moving on to presentations, recognitions, and appointments. At this time, I have one appointment or reappointment tonight I'm asking. I'm asking for a motion to reappoint Ken Keeney of Pyramid Electric to serve a two-year term on the Building Code of Appeals Board. Uh, do I hear a motion? Move. Wigington, do I hear a second? <coughs> Schaefer. Schaefer. I couldn't hear the other one. So Wigington and Schaefer made the motion in a second to approve Ken Keeney. Um, are there any questions? Okay, this board is only as needed. It's not used very often, but it's important. So at this time, I'll ask the clerk to call roll call. Kinsella. Aye. Zuko? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Schaefer? Motion carries. Thank you. We go on to number eight, approval of the minutes. At this time, I'd ask for a motion to approve the city council minutes from an executive session minutes of July 6, 2020. Do I hear a motion? Steele, so move. Steele makes the motion. Do I hear Pusa. a second? Pusa was the second. Pusa. Pusa. We have a motion by Steele, second by Alderman Pusa, to approve the city council meeting minutes and the executive session minutes of July 6. 2020. Are there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, roll call. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rothweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Motion carries. Go to number nine. Uh, motion to approve the claims disbursements in the amount of $1,080,064.84 and 
and the July 2nd, 2020 payroll in the amount of $783,922.99 and the July 17th, 2020 payroll in the amount of $789,312.17. Do I hear a motion to approve those expenditures? Dittleman and Schaefer. Dittleman and Schaefer. So we have a motion, uh, as I just read, to approve the claims, payroll, and disbursements. Any questions about any of those figures? Hearing none, roll call. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rockweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Motion carries. Number 10, I'd ask for a motion to receive and file the treasurer's report of May 2020 and a statement of cash and investment report May 2020. Uh, do I hear a uh, motion to receive and file those two things for audit? Schaefer. Schaefer, and who was the second? Ferguson. Ferguson. We have a motion by Schaefer, a uh, second by Ferguson to uh, approve and receive and file the treasurer's report and the statement of cash and investment report. Are there any corrections or questions? Roll call. Pusa? Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rockweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Motion carries. We go now to 11A, a Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, before I ask the clerk to read these two, uh, Mr. Harner, would you want to, I know we talked briefly today, do you have a couple words of guidance before we get into this? As far as? Well, you, we talked today briefly and you were just saying you were going to remind them about the, it's the zoning. Oh, oh, the, uh, when you're considering zoning board, you just want to make sure that, that you, uh, contain your analysis to the appropriate criteria that are mentioned in the advisory report. Okay. That's it. Okay. Just so we don't wander too far is what he was reminding me today. So at this time, I'm going to ask the city clerk to read the motions coming from zoning, please. Mm -hmm. oh. <clears throat> 11 a one 26 June 20th to Landria Simpson, a request for a special use permit to operate an adult use cannabis craft grower organization at 8955, 8956, 8973, 8974, 8991, and 8992 Bebo Court, parcel numbers 0710020001, 
and 07100202006 located in a D1 light industry district applicable sections of the zoning code 162.308 and 162.515 ward 8 zoning board recommended approval in the name of the applicant only by a majority vote of 4 to 2 so do i first of all hear a motion uh, to approve the zoning board's recommendation. Wigington. Uh, Wigington uh, makes the motion. Who was the second? Kinsella. Kinsella, okay. We have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Mayor uh, Oliver Wigington. Yes. Okay, uh, just a couple things. Uh, as of zoning, uh, Ms. Simpson's application had not been approved yet. I mean, there's a lot of hurdles and things got to jump through. I was wondering, how long does it take the process to approve? Uh, number two, I want to find out if the two applicants, the two co-owners, I think she said she lives in Houston, I'm assuming, uh, are they going to be moving into the area and be hands-on owners um, as opposed to only one being here and the other one uh, being down in Houston? Uh, also, there's still a lot of talk, a lot of concern about this. And, you know, one thing about it is this building is going to be very discreet. When you drive, when you drive, fly up and down Route 15, you know, your, your eyes have got to be on the road. This is going to be set back so far. It's going to be a warehouse. Everything will be fully contained on the inside. Uh, it will be lit up, 24-hour security. Uh, so is there going to be a big night neon sign with an arrow pointing down that says, we are cannabis growers, no, not. So people think, man, this thing's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. We did get the uh, the information today on, on the layout. I had suggested that the only thing on the building be the address of the building uh, with no name, nothing like that, but uh, the growing, all the offices, everything is on the inside of the building. So it's gonna be very inconspicuous. Um, and you know, this is, you know, in, in ordinance and legal, we designated eight areas uh, for this type of an operation, and this happens to be one of the areas. Uh, that parts of land out there probably would not be developed for anything else. We're going to get uh, license fees off this. We're going to get 3% of the gross. But uh, is it going to stick out like a sore thumb? I don't think so. You know, I I'm sure uh, when it's all said and done, it's going to be very discreet, very well maintained. Uh, of course, we would expect it to be. So, um, you know, I want to make that statement, but then I had the two questions about her application and are they going to be hands-on owners? Ma'am, are you still on the line here? Uh, would you like yes. to, can you answer I'm, any of I'm that? I'm here. Uh, yes, the application, we were supposed to know, um, this was pre-COVID, we were supposed to know in June. So, of course, with COVID and the virus, um, things have gotten pushed back. Sure. I believe now we're supposed to know end of August. So if everything stays on track, we will know if we won the application towards the end of August. Um, concerning will we be moving? Yes. Um, two of us will be moving permanent. There's already uh, one business owner that's there and then one other person that's a part of the team that's there. So it'll be a total of four of us on the team that will be there permanently, hands-on, um, of course, interviewing and hiring uh, local people in the area to help run the operation. Um, I think your other question, there will not be a neon sign. We're not selling to the public, so we want to be as um, incognito as possible and just kind of blend in, and we don't want to stick out with the source thumb for security purposes for us and the public. Um, so um, I'm not sure if we can just put the address on the building with no name. I'll have to go back and look at the regulations, sure. um, what the state has told us that we can and cannot do. Um, they, they pretty much kind of regulate that. But um, there would not be a huge sign. It would be a small sign if the name 
is on the door, I mean, on the um, building. Um, and if, if we don't have to put a name on the building, we don't have to. I mean, um, you know, I want to I want to remain as discreet as possible um, for security purposes. So definitely no neon sign. We're not selling to the public, so no one needs to even know that we're there. Um, we're we'll just transporting to the retail facility. So sounds good. Yeah, Mayor Alderman Wigginson. Yeah, uh, Alderman Wigginson again. Um, you know, the state is the one who vets these operations, not the city or or the county. And this right. application yeah. is very very strict. So if for some mm -hmm. particular reason um, that this, they find a glitch in this, um, then will this be withdrawn from the table or where do we go with this? Well, we'd have to see, first of all, yeah, they, they would have the right to, uh, uh, you know, if they don't, I take it the, I, t I take it the, uh, uh, closing on the property is probably contingent upon you getting this license. Correct. Uh -huh. So, so if there's no closing, there's no deal. So there's no zoning. So. We'll just have to take a step at a time and wait, put it once we if we get past this hurdle then we it's in the state's hands okay. exactly Mayor, <laughs> any other questions this is all yes i have a couple of questions um are you licensed uh Shalandri, are you licensed to sell nationwide or just within the state of illinois just within the and state I, of illinois okay and my second question is, all right, my second question is, who will you be selling to? What are some of the firms that you will be selling to or some of the uh, businesses you will sell to? Well, right now there is a shortage um, um, of cannabis to the state, so I will be selling to surrounding dispensary. Okay, thank you. All right. Is there anybody else? Uh, Alderman Almore, I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes. If, if Director McCaskill is still available, I'm sure she is. Um, yes, sir. I was not. I was not on the line for the zoning meeting, and uh, I was wondering if Director McCaskill could share with us. I read through the minutes that two board members of the zoning board questioned uh, the entrance to the city, and there's some kind of issue with concern of a neighbor and i read through the minutes they, they were pretty thorough i thought and i that explains the two no votes from the zoning board is there anything else that i would, would be missing on the understanding and comprehensive comprehensiveness of the minutes uh that anybody here on the city council may have missed in your opinion if I may, um, when the two no votes were given, no rationale for the no was given. There were questions, but the questions regarding the entrance to the city and of that sort um, weren't relayed as the reasoning as to why. And those questions were given prior to um, Ms. Dr. Simpson relaying um, the fact that she would be going for a warehouse versus a greenhouse type of use. Um, there was you know you all heard from the neighbor on the previous council meeting um his attorney was on the phone but um at that time they did express concerns but for the most part the information that's been provided to you by dr simpson is the same information that was provided she did go into further detail regarding how her security would be handled um, how her transporting would be handled, which is your next application. If you all have questions about that, she was able to provide us with a good amount of detail about that. The packet that you received today included some of that information from her state um, license application as well. So for the most part, when the no vote was given, the specific reason as to why no was not given, but you are correct, it may very likely have had to do with the concern about being an entrance to the city. However, um, it was expressed during the meeting that this would be a warehouse. There would be no visible use, and it would also serve as Dr. Simpson's corporate office for her business. Thank you. That's all I have. I hope that keeps you Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, here. Yes, Mayor. Alden yeah. Randall. Yes. Uh, from uh, Jamie is there. Uh, from a revenue standpoint, from an economic benefit to the city. Um, Alderman Wigginton mentioned 3% of the crows, and I'm wondering um, what mechanism provides for that. 
Garrett, do you want to touch on that? Um, well, I, I don't know where the 3% comes from because uh, the, the 3% that, that you approved is a retailer's tax. Right. And it applies at the point of retail sale. Now, there is a, there are other states that, there are other taxes that the state collects and distributes through a cannabis regulation fund. But that, you know, that, that is uh, cut up, it's distributed, for instance, 8% of it goes to local governments per capita uh, for crime prevention, training, and interdiction efforts, things like that. And then there's a treatment fund and that, but the 3%, is is your municipal cannabis retailers occupation tax and that applies to the retail sale not the not the uh uh wholesale but, but it is true the city will there get some no, percent the city will get what mayor is garrett isn't it true the city will the city get gets a per, the city gets a per in city gets a per capita uh a portion right. of the state cannabis cultivation privilege tax, which is seven percent, but they get a portion of that. But it's 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 dedicated for crime prevention, training, and interdiction efforts. And of course, the city will get property tax. Okay. So really, so nothing federal fund from a retail tax standpoint. No, because it's not a it's not a retail uh, sale. Correct. Right. I understand that. That's yeah. I, that's why I brought up the question because I thought I remember it was retail and this is a wholesale business. Right. That's correct. If I may, the state collects seven percent uh, on the gross wholesale, and then it goes into a fund and it and it's divided up, uh, you know, multiple ways. It's kind of carved up, but but eight percent of that fund goes to local governments per capita for certain certain items. This is an issue, if I may. Okay, go ahead. If I may, there also is a, there, there is a business license that is required. So for each of the uses that are on agenda for tonight, there is a $5,000 business license for each use that has to be renewed on an annual basis. Okay. So $10,000 in licensure fees per year. Okay. Very Thank good. you, Nessa. Okay. Are there any other questions? Uh, yes. <laughs> Excuse me, Andrew Eichels, the DL Products LLC. Um, Wait a minute. Who is this? Uh, Shalandria. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Is this an alderman representation portion? Yeah. Are you part of the, Are you part of her group? Uh, no, I'm just a, a, low, a public, just in the hearing. No, we, we're into we're on to the mayor. we're on to the alderman t uh, questions only at this point. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Are there any other questions by the city council? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Ready. Mayor Dillman. Yes. Uh, can you tell me the the warehouse size that's going to be there? and how many parcels it's actually going to take up and what it's going to look like aesthetically? I, I don't have any drawings or anything in front of me yet at this time. I guess it would still have to go through those procedures with our planning commissioner, ex, 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 commission, et cetera. Um, but, but it's... If there was... Okay. Mayor, if I may, there yeah. was a packet that was submitted that gave just an overview of floor plan. I, I, I'm off the top of my head. I do not know the square footage, and I'm not sure if Dr. Simpson has that information. But um, it was referenced at zoning board that it could be a warehouse as opposed to a greenhouse, and that building would have to go to zoning board. I'm sorry, to planning commission as well as city council for final approval for appearance and layout. In addition, um, because there would have to be a site plan. In addition. Um, I just lost track of what I was going to say. I believe Dr. Simpson was getting ready to say something. But that final building and the layout of the site would have to come before City Council after Planning Commission review of the site plan and the building elevations. In addition, there are six remaining parcels in the Bevo, um, along Bevo Court. From my understanding and our reading of the application, 
Dr. Simpson has those remaining portions of that industrial park under contract. So she would take the remaining green space in the court directly across from Gray Eagle for her facility. But as far as overall lot coverage, we have not seen that yet, but perhaps she can provide information on that. We do propose in our application that we were going to use roughly 22,000 square feet for the design. Included in that space would be our business operations, such as kitchen, a garage where the transportation can drive into safely. We can close down the garage and unload and load. We also have 5,000 square feet of that will be used for the first year of cannabis growing under that roof. So it's a lot of things that's going to be used in that 22,000 square feet. Thank you. So not just cultivation. It would be our offices as well. Very good. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'm going to call for a roll call vote. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? I'm going to make a statement here. I'm voting no because of religious reasons. Okay. Move on. Gentlemen? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rothweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Motion carries 15 to 1. We go on to the next one, which is a similar, uh, under the same case, but a little different scenario, and I ask the clerk to read 11A2. 11A2, 27 June 20, Shalandria Simpson, a request for a special use permit to operate an adult use cannabis transporting organization at 8955, 8956, 8973, 8974, 8991, and 8992 Bevo Court. Parcel numbers 7 Located in a D1 light industry district, Applicable sections of the zoning code 162.308 and 162.515, Ward 8. Zoning board recommended approval in the name of the applicant only by a majority vote of 4 to 2. Do I hear a motion for this uh, 11A2? All in Wigginton. Wigginton made the motion. Who's the second? Schaefer. Sch Schaefer made a second. Do I hear any discussion on this second one? I think we've exhausted quite a few of the questions, but is there anything else remaining? I, I just want to say Mayor, this. Alderman yes, Randall. Alderman Randall, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, there was an email that came out today that contained a lot of information regarding this application and what's before this committee. It is enlightening if you have the time to read it. Um, it would clear up a lot of your questions. I would encourage every member of the council to uh, take the time, uh, invest that time, so that uh, you're, uh, you're educated regarding this and the questions that you might get from your constituents. So that's really all I had to say, Mayor. Okay. Anyone else has a comment or a question? 
And I'm going to call for a roll call vote on 11A2. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Anthony? Aye. Ovian? No. 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 Oh, sorry. Gentlemen? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rothweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Husa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Motion passes 15 to 1. We go on to streets and grades 11B. We have a number of issues. They did all pass tonight in the committee, I think pretty much unanimous. Um, do, is there a desire to read any of them together? I'll read them all together, Mr. Mayor. Yep, read them together. Okay, so uh, I'd. Uh, would you go ahead? Yeah, I'll read them. She'll read them. 11B1, motion to approve the 17th Street easement expansion request by Ameren, Illinois, in the amount of $2,075. 11B2, motion to approve option for Piper Hills easement 1 and option for easement 2 request by Ameren, Illinois, in the amount of $1,000 per option. 11B3, motion to approve a streetscape construction supplemental services agreement with Gonzalez Companies, LLC in the amount of $50,550. 11B4, motion to approve a contract with St. Clair County trustee payment account to purchase the property at 604 South 29th Street, parcel number 08200100001, in the amount of $795. 11B5, motion, motion to approve eight downtown easements, parcel 08-220-333-002, parcel number 08-220-333-019, parcel number 08-220-333-038, parcel number 08-220-338-027, parcel number 08-220-338-028, parcel number 08-220-338-030, parcel number 08-220-338-042, and parcel number 08-220-338052, requested by Ameren for improvement to the southeast quadrant of the square. 11B6, motion to approve a preliminary engineering services agreement with Kaskaskia Engineering Group, LLC, for Forest Avenue, Monroe to McKinley, in the amount of $56,384. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Uh, do we hear a motion to approve these uh, items from Streets and Grades? Oh, Wigington. Wigington makes the motion from his committee. Do I hear a second? Rothweiler. Rothweiler. Rothweiler made the second. Do I hear discussion on any of these items? Why got? Yes, sir. Uh, 11B6. Since we're doing the sidewalks and the curbs and all that, can we see this, get it in the budget or see if we come up the money to Black Taco Streets? Well, we're going to block, that's going to get an overlay, those first two blocks, but we don't have any more money designated right. to do any additional at this time. We'll have to look in the next year or two to try to do the next couple blocks. And it's just hard, uh, uh, Alderman Wygant, because in your neighborhood right there, it has to be either a grant or motor fuel. Those are the only two funds that are eligible to help uh, do work in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we're working towards it. This is Thank you. this is another start. Okay. So we have a motion. Thank you. We have a motion and we have a second. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, I'm going to call for a roll call vote on these items one through six on eleven B one through six for streets and grades. Roll call. 
Anthony? Hi. Ovian? Hi. Gentlemen? Hi. Schaefer? Hi. Steele? Steele? Hi. Rothweiler? Hi. Elmore? Hi. Wygant? Hi. Wigington? Hi. Barfield? Hi. Kinsella? Hi. Hazel? Hi. Duco? Hi. Pusa? Hi. Randall? Hi. Ferguson? Hi. Motions carry. 11C, motion from traffic. Um, Alderman um, Ovian? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. 11C1, motion for removal of four parking meters located on the second block of North Church Street at 225 East A Street, six parking meters on East A Street between North High and North Jackson Street, 28 parking meters on the east side of South Third Street from West Lincoln to West Monroe Street, and one parking meter on the west side of South Third Street between West Lincoln and West Harrison. So moved. We have a motion coming from Alderman Ovian from traffic. Do I hear a second? Elmore Ferguson. Elmore made the second uh, on that motion, uh, but made by Alderman Ovian. Do I hear any discussion on any of those parking issues coming from the traffic committee? Hearing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote and have the proper ordinances drawn. Ovian? Aye. Gentlemen? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rothweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. The motions carry uh, for reference parking. We go now to communication. We have one communication in front of us tonight, and I'd ask the clerk to read it, please. 12A, St. Paul United Church of Christ. Request from St. Paul United Church of Christ, 115 West B Street, to close North First Street from West B Street to West C Street on Sunday, July 26, August 2nd, and August 9th, 2020, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. for outdoor worship services. Do I hear a motion to approve the communication request? Schaefer. Schaefer, made, Ferguson. Schaefer and Steele made their uh, motion in a second. Um, <coughs> any questions? It's pretty simple. Hearing none, I'd ask for a roll call. Gentlemen? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rothweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. 
motion carries. We have no petitions and we have no resolutions. I'd ask for a motion to read by title only ordinance 8550, 8553, 8554, and 8556. Do I hear a motion to read those uh, ordinances by title only? Schaefer. Schaefer makes a motion. Do I hear a second? Ferguson. Ferg Ferguson made the second this time. Uh, we have a motion and a second to read the th four ordinances I just read by title only. Uh, is there uh, by title only? Uh, roll call. Schaefer. Let's get Sarah in favor. Aye. Steele. Aye. Rothweiler. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Garfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Rand Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Anthony? Aye. Ovian? No. Dentleman? Aye. Motion carries to read those four ordinances by title only. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's take the first one. 15A, Ordinance 8850-2020, a zoning ordinance in regards to 23 March 20th, Lattice Hayden. So an I vote on this is to, uh, deny, is to deny, okay? Everybody understand that? This is from two weeks ago. Give me a roll call so that we keep that one clear. Oh, do I hear a motion to, to, uh, a motion to approve this ordinance to deny? Do I hear a motion? Wigington. 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 Do, do I hear a second? Schaefer. Uh, Schaefer made it. Okay. Um, we have a motion, a second to deny, to approve the denial of 8550 ordinance as uh, presented tonight. Roll call. Steele. Aye. Rockweiler. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Wygant. Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Hazel? No. Duco? No. Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Dentleman? Oh, I got Schaefer. Aye. Schaefer? Aye. 15 to 1. 15 to 1. Uh, the motion passes to deny that. If there's no objections, I'm going to ask the clerk to read the next three ordinances uh, as, a, as a group. Does anybody disagree? No objection. Um, Alderman Ovian, do you yes. want to? I. Okay, let's do this. I do. I, let's, I'd let's, rather... Okay, let's do this way. How about if we do 8553 and 8554 together? Is that, is that okay, Alderman Ovian? Okay, so let's have the clerk read those two, okay? Ordinance 8853-2020, a zoning ordinance in regards to 26 June 20th, Shalandria Simpson. Ordinance 8854-2020, a zoning ordinance in regards to 27 June 20th, Shalandria Simpson. Do I hear a motion to approve 8553 and 8554? Schaefer. Wigington and Schaefer again. So we have a motion and a second to approve 80, ordinance 85, 88, I'm sorry, 8853 and 8854. 
Uh, we have a motion and a second. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, roll call. Rockweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigginton? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsilla? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Kusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? No. Dentleman? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Passes 15 to 1. Those two ordinances pass 15 to 1. If now we go to ordinance 8856, and I will ask her to read that by title only. Ordinance 8856-2020, an ordinance amending Chapter 76 parking schedules of the revised ordinances of the City of Belleville, Illinois, as amended by amending portions of sections thereof. Do I hear a motion to approve Ordinance 8856? Somebody making a, a motion? Schaefer. Schaefer made a motion. Do I, hear, do I hear a second? Duco. Duco, Duco made a second. We have a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 8856. Are there any questions on Ordinance 8856? Hearing none, roll call. Elmore? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Wigginton? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Ovian? Ovian? <laughs> Dentleman? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Aye. Steele? Steele? Aye. Rothweiler? Aye. Motion carries. Unfinished business, I don't know of any. Miscellaneous and new business. I'd ask for a motion to pay the motor fuel claims in the amount of $8,683.02. Do I hear a motion? Elmore, Ferguson. Elmore, Elmore and Ferguson. Elmore and Ferguson, motion and second for motor fuel. Any discussion on motor fuel? Roll call. Wygant? All right. Wigginton? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Dentleman? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rothweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before I ask for a motion to go into executive session, 
if you all looked at what we're proposing, do you have uh, some deep questions that we should be in executive session for, or does everyone basically understand we feel the staff and I uh, and the city attorney have met, we feel that these positions, we are in need to have them back. We have, uh, we are requesting your approval. I mean, we can go into executive session if you have particular questions, but if you are in agreement with what you've read, uh, we could just uh, ask for a motion to uh, approve the, the, uh, the recommendation to return furloughed, pay, uh, furloughed uh, employees. Let's group them together and read them as one. Are you needing to go into executive session is my question. I'll do whatever you no. like. No. 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 I don't. Steele no. doesn't need to. Okay. No. Is, I got Anybody feel, I mean, speak up. I'm not, it's not held against you. Does anybody prefer to go into executive session? Okay. If we do not, no. I'm going to ask the, con, uh, the clerk to read the motions that we are recommending <laughs> Uh, as a group, okay? okay? All right. Yes. Go ahead. Motion to recall Jean Kirk Public Works from unpaid furlough status effective July 21st, 2020. Motion to hire two part time Public Works employees. Motion to terminate memorandum of understanding with Laborers International Union of North America, local union number 459 concerning bargaining unit member furloughs pursuant to section three thereof and recall union employee Nathan Wright from unpaid furlough status effective July 21st, 2020. Motion to terminate memorandum of understanding with Teamsters Petroleum and Allied Trades local union number 50 clerical bargaining unit concerning bargaining unit member furloughs pursuant to section three thereof and recall union employees Paula Dellum, Renee Thompson, Camille Jones, Cornetta Gage, Diane Burlesman and Penny Moore from unpaid furlough status effective July 21st, 2020. Motion to recall union members from American Federation of State, County and Municipal Employees, Local 1765, Library Employees Bargaining Unit concerning bargaining unit member furloughs pursuant to Article 2, Section 5B thereof and recall union employees Brittany Main, Frida Blanchard, Tyler Harris and Gail Feetsome from unpaid furlough status effective July 21st, 2020. Do I hear a motion to approve uh, bringing these people back as just read and specific uh, the specific names uh, from the specific departments as just read by the city clerk? Do I hear a motion? Wygott and Steele. Wygott made the motion seconded by Steele to approve what uh, city clerk.
people back that were specified tonight. It's an attempt to try to keep things moving as best we can in a fair and, and financially sound manner. So at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote to approve these motions. Wigington. Wigington. Aye. Barfield. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Hazel. Aye. Duco. Aye. Kusa. Aye. Randall. Aye. Ferguson. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Obian. Aye. Dentleman. Aye. Schaefer. Aye. Steele. Aye. Rothweiler. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Why not? Aye. Those motions uh, are approved, and they will be notified those employees tomorrow. So thank you. Uh, huh? They start. Well, they start tomorrow, but they'll be notified tonight by their by either HR or their department heads that it all passed, and that most of them start tomorrow. Yes. Um, do I hear a motion for adjournment? And remember, we got to take a roll call. Roth, Rothweiler and Schaefer seconded, made the motion in a second. Uh, anybody, uh, if I don't hear anybody opposed, roll call for uh, uh, adjourn adjourning. Barfield? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Hazel? Aye. Duco? Aye. Pusa? Aye. Randall? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Steele? Aye. Rothweiler? Rockweiler? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you.